Oh, hey there, I'm back. It's time for a 3D printer review. So this machine was sent over by a vendor that works for Longer, and this is the Longer LK4X 3D printer. And when I first received it and received some of the information about it and then opened it up, I was like, wow, this probably checks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. It's inexpensive, it's got a nice you know, color display screen. Uh, it has a direct drive uh, hot end setup. It looks very much like a Bontech kind of clone. Uh, it's got auto bed leveling, it has a 3D touch, which is the knockoff version of a BL touch. Uh, it's got the filament out sensor, and as you can hear, it's pretty quiet. It's got 32 bit drivers, and you know, usually with a lot of these printers that are inexpensive and they use 32 bit drivers, they use the loudest fans on the planet. This one's not so bad. So, what I'm going to do here over the next couple of minutes is tell you about my experience printing it. Uh, like I said, the vendor sent this over in November, and two things happened that delayed this process. Um, I finished up my degree programs. I had two very heavy classes this semester, uh, so that delayed me, and then I caught COVID. <laughs> so, that took me down for about a month. So here it is, middle of January, I'm finally getting to this. I know they wanted to have a video out in time for the holiday shopping season. Um, sorry about that, but your health comes first. So this review is my opinion. You know, again, this is just my word. Um, take it for what it's worth. And we'll chat about this printer and tell you some of the pros and cons. Are you ready? Let's do this. Welcome back. Okay, so first of all, if you've never seen my videos before, my name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. I'm big into 3D printing, cosplay. I got an R2D2, a Stormtrooper, I got a Batman suit. You get the gist. I'm a pretty nerdy guy. So, welcome. If you're not a subscriber, please press the button down below and become one. You know, I think 91.5 of you guys are not subscribers. Go on, hit the button. I double dog dare you. So here we are with a longer 3D printer. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, no money, changed hands. They sent this to me for free. And I've done a whole bunch of prints with this thing. And I've done a whole bunch of troubleshooting with this thing. So let's go over the whole, <laughs> the whole bit here. So first of all, I got some really nice prints that I did with this, and I'll show those off a little bit later. You can probably see them here on the desk. But let's talk about the setup. Now, the instructions that come with these 3D printers, it's kind of become the routine. They're somewhat laughable. So the first thing I would suggest if you purchase this printer is two things. One, if you check the flash drive that comes with the printer, there is a PDF that has a way better manual than this. Uh, one of the frustrations with this was putting it together. You know, they advertise these printers as being put together in 30 minutes or 15 minutes or 7.5 minutes, whatever. Uh, one of the things that really uh, I got snagged on was uh, there's a little optical sensor down here that you have to connect and it's not the kind of thing that you just plug in. You have to make sure that one of those prongs is significantly bigger than the other one. The other thing is, is that with this thing bolted in here uh, on the front of the uh, uh, aluminum here, you can't plug it in. So, and as is demonstrated in the video and elsewhere, uh, you would remove this and that's how you get that set up. It's also a little bit tricky on the back of the machine as well too, because you're routing this filament sensor around the lead screw and it's, and again, if you're just following what's on here, <laughs> and they keep on calling the packing material the packing cotton. I'm not sure I understand that. And with all the people that are in the longer group, you think they would speak to some someone in there to proofread some of these things, but whatever, I nitpick. Uh, so that said, the, and the setup wasn't horrible once you had the video or looked at the more detailed setup instructions. So again, if you think this is going to take you 15 minutes or less, you're smarter than me. Okay, so once we have it all up and set up, and it's time for that first power on, after you've made sure you remove the decal from the power supply, and made sure you select the voltage that's appropriate for where you live, then that's pretty much it. You're all set to go. Now, the instructions, again, on the video are very good as far as the whole bed leveling process. The one thing, and I'll go into this in detail a little bit later, is one of the weaknesses of this printer is that it doesn't have a second lead screw. So you have a bit of slop here going on. And I don't know if you can fully see that in the camera shot I got here, but um, I'll go into more details on that. So that's been one of the Achilles heels of this printer. When this is cooperating and not sagging or leading, I'm getting some fantastic prints. As a matter of fact, let me show them to you. 
Okay, let me pause right there and also let you know that I also did the calibration. So what I did is I did a few things. Uh, I did my E-steps to make sure I was getting the appropriate steps for the amount of uh, material I was flowing. And then once that was done, I did the slicer flow settings. So what I'm doing is making sure I'm not over or under extruding. And again, you know, the teaching tech uh, wiki uh, on his website is fantastic for this if you're new. But as you can see here, uh, this is one of the cubes that uh, I finally did. The first one, a little rough on the bottom, but the subsequent ones looked great. So now we're printing accurately and the results are looking good. Okay, the next print is retraction test tower. So I went from uh, 0.6 all the way up to 1.2 and I found that 0.8 was perfect. Next up was an XYZ cube and you can see here, the bottom I'm still fine tuning, but my goodness, that, that, that beautiful surface and I mean, that top layer looks fantastic. So uh, I feel like I have the cure profile pretty well dialed in. Here's another test I like to run. It did a really good job at overhangs. I mean, the way that part cooling fan works does a really good job. Still fine tuning a few things on the layers, uh, but like I said, overall, really good results. And everyone loves the Benchy. It's not my favorite test print, but here it is. And uh, I mean, eventually it does an okay job of showing what the printer can do. But uh, like I said, the bow looks really good. That first layer looks fantastic. And overall, a very good result. Yes, I'm a cat guy, and this is the fun model to print because those fur tufts, a lot of overhangs, and you know, if you have the printer well di dialed in, they come out really good. Yeah, you can see a few of the layer lines because it's a 0.2 layer resolution, but still excellent. And then let me show you this clip of when it was being printed. I had to take the spool holder off the top to fit it inside the safety enclosure, but as you can hear, it's not too terrible. Fairly quiet printer. Let's talk about the touch display. So yeah, I mean, it looks great. That's wonderful animation and everything. My only issue is that going through these menu options and touching them, you know, for example, right here is, you know, zero C and green. It's very difficult to see. The other thing is, as I press the button, I would like to have a button or, or noise sound effect, you know, to let me know that these changes are, are, are clicking in and, and doing something while I click it. Uh, so anyway, we'll leave that alone. Uh, let me go back, and again, it takes a couple presses sometimes. If I go to, oh, let's just go to movement here. And if I go to, so I've hit it and nothing happens. If I hit it again, there it goes. And, you know, very small text showing how far it can move. And like I said, it can only go in distances of 0 0.1, 1, and 10. I'd like it to be a little bit more, you know, but that's fine. Uh, but sometimes getting these presses just right can be a little, as you can see, it kind of does its own thing. Um, same thing going across. So, I mean, it looks nice. I just, just, I think if it had a beep, that tactile interface, sounds like something from Star Trek, <laughs> uh, would be nicer. It's something that I would like. I would like the ability to turn on that sound effect or turn it, you know, or turn it off. Uh, but yeah, here we go. So, you know, on a scale of is 10 grade and one is the worst, you know, I'd give it about a six or seven. I mean, it's okay, but you know, sometimes when you press things and nothing happens, especially when you're doing the baby stepping, eh, that can be a problem. Okay, let me see if I can describe one of the issues we're having uh, with this machine. So what's happening is this only has one lead screw on one side. It doesn't have one on this side. So this part of the carriage is just going up and down uh, by pressure from this eccentric nut for all three of these wheels to grab into this channel and go up and down. The problem is that this particular wheel is nice and snug and this one is spinning. It's, you can move it back and forth. Uh, I've even gone through, I got a nice white magic marker here. I use this for all my V-slot wheel printers. So what I can do is I can put marks on there and then visually verify that these black wheels are moving up and down uh, appropriately. So what happens here is due to this, <laughs> I mean, I've even unscrewed and retightened and made sure these were all aligned a couple times and it's, it's been a frustration. So what happens is that as this goes up and down, this side will 
tip, you know, will, will be out of sync. You know, it's got that kind of play to it. So what that does is when you're doing your manually bed leveling over here, if this is decided it wants to be lower, you're gonna be closer here. If this is decided it's gonna be up here, <laughs> you're gonna be higher. So, um, and what's happening, I only have this one eccentric nut, <laughs> which is fine, that usually works, but this guy is, is, is tight. You know, I can move it so it's not too tight, but I've got this guy here free spinning. So that's a bit of an issue. Now, and again, you know, the reason I mention this is this is supposed to be a, you know, very inexpensive, full featured 3D printer. Uh, it's got a great surface, the BL touch, it's very quiet. Uh, but, you know, this is a problem. You know, if you, if you have that much slack in there, uh, it's gonna, well, if you're a first time user, I, that would really frustrate me. So that's one of my grudges with the machine. All right, take all that digging and prying, but in there, let me get the light in here too for you. Big old glob. So when you unload this thing, it likes to blob up. So I had to take the shroud off to get this arm fully open. So I can clear this jam. Okay, so first of all, my 17 year old cat made the effort to come all the way down the stairs and climb up on me, so she's the queen of the house. Here she is. So, she's hanging out. Okay, so this is for the folks that like to skim ahead in the video and not watch the whole video and just get to the you know, conclusions. So here's the pros and cons. And again, you can scroll back on the timeline here and, and see in more detail some of the things I'm gonna squawk about here. So one of the pros I wanna give this machine is the 32-bit board. It is very quiet, the fans are quiet. So it's one of those few inexpensive 3D printers that I've come across, and I have 24, that is actually quiet. So way to go, guys. The other thing is the bed surface. Now this is using a magnetic bed and it's got a spring steel and a PEI surface. Honestly, in 2022-23, they should all come with this. Uh, I did see where some people were complaining that they're having problems with the print sticking to the surface. A couple things. What I use, I, I, do, I do two things, okay? I use IPA, 91%, and I use a microfiber cloth, so that's a very good way of scrubbing the surface. Or the other thing you can do is use alcohol prep pads. I find these work fantastic as well, too, uh, and sometimes it's a little bit easier to have those around. So I had no issue with print sticking, and uh, so make sure if you're going to purchase this printer and, and encounter any issues, make sure you clean it. Um, the other thing I want to give this thing uh, credit for is the part cooling fan on this thing was fantastic. Uh, as you saw in the 3D printer test that I did, uh, you can scroll back and see that. The overhangs, I mean, it did a fantastic job. And a, a lot of these machines, you know, at this price point, they'll have a part cooling fan that, quite frankly, it looks like it was an afterthought. Uh, this one's quite good. It, it's on both sides of the print and it does a great job. The other thing I want to uh, give a credit to is it does have a bed leveling sensor. Uh, I wish it was a BL touch. Um, I'm not a big proponent of, of clones, but it is what it is. So it comes with a 3D touch and it did a good job and it works. And for this price point, I think it's great that they include it in the bundle. Now let's get to the cons. Now again, what, I rec what I'm talking about are cons are not necessarily defects in the machine. So I'm not trying to scare you off. I'm, the point of my video isn't to say yay and nay, you should buy it or not. You're, you know, put on your big boy pants so you can make up your own mind. Uh, so the one of the things I had issues with, as you've seen, is I have a problem with two of the three uh, V-slot wheels on the side over here that just one wheel is spinning freely. So I'm winding up a little bit of a lag and lead every now and then with some of these prints. And it, it can make the bed leveling kind of, kind of challenging. Now the solution to that would be a second Z-screw. Uh, so that would be an initial stepper motor, lead screw, and of course, you know, the wiring to it. So longer if you're watching this it's not a hard upgrade to do and i think it would definitely be a big benefit now i did look around and i have seen in the facebook groups other people have had issues with this kind of thing with the one side of the gantry kind of being a little lag lead like that um, so it's not just me but again these things are mass produced you may get a better machine than me 
The other thing, as much as I like these touch screens, I want the feedback to verify that I've indeed pressed the screen. And in several instances, as I showed in the video, is that sometimes you'll press it and nothing happens, and then sometimes when you press, you get a double take. So that's a little annoying. I also wish that, and maybe they can do this in firmware, is I like the ability if there was sound. So if I press something, I'm getting a beep or something. And if I find that annoying, I can disable that. So I just wish I had that option. And the other con with this printer is, you know, if you use the load and unload function of this machine, you're going to, you may not right away, but you're going to encounter clogs. And, you know, my solution for that, as I mentioned, is, you know, removing this shroud. This way you can fully expose the arm and, you know, remove the material. I wouldn't, myself, when I print with this printer, when I unload material, I don't use their automated process. I just heat the temperature and, and pull it out. So, again, you know, there's... One of the nice workarounds would be is if they, if, if they make another version of this, is if they do open up that side a little bit so you can actually open this arm up, then you can get in there with the tweezers or you know the brass brush or whatever you need to clean that clock. So, so that's it. So overall, a good machine, a few little snafus that I'm encountering, but hey, if you get one of these machines, I'd be curious what you think. Okay, so down in the description below, if you wish to purchase one of these machines from the vendor that was kind enough to send it, go check them out. And speaking of check out, don't forget to check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and of course, Twitter. So if you want to see what I'm working on, and I'm working on some cool stuff now that I'm all done school, check it out. So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed Mama Cat joining us here too. Or oh, you've had it. I think they have to. Let's wrap this up. So that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Print safe, guys.